Hey there guys, what's going on? Gail Wright here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Danmachi Memoria Freeze video. And today we are going to be looking at what's going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks as Danmachi has dropped some new information via the JP livestream. Now, of course, if you guys go on to enjoy this video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. We're only 35 subscribers away from 500. It would be amazing to reach that milestone. And of course, comment down below what event are you guys most excited about? Because we're actually getting two big things this week, you know? So let me know what you guys are most excited about. So first and foremost, if I'm not mistaken, yes, this is the first thing that they showed off on the stream and that we are getting a rerun of the third over from Danmachi. So is it wrong to expect a hot spring in the dungeon, which is kind of interesting we weren't too sure exactly what it was going to be when it dropped on stream right because um, if you look at past over events right well the second over did become a rerun at some point right it did get a rerun at some point the first over actually shifted into the main story so we were we weren't sure if this story was going to be part of the uh you know main story or if it was going to be a rerun turns out it's a rerun but along with that we are getting buffs for some of these units if i'm not mistaken they well we can max limit break four star miak by clearing all quests on very hard so a free miak for those who haven't played this event which is great for others it'll just be seros but if I'm not mistaken, if we go through these units, these are all units that we're getting basically. Um, these are the two banners as well. We are getting balance adjustments. Now we're going to look at them in just a second. But generally speaking, a lot of these units are dated. In my personal opinion, you're probably not going to want to summon on them. I will be doing another should you summon fully dedicated to these units talking about how useful they are. Are they any good or anything of that sort? But to give you guys an idea, Miak is an assist. Uh, Ice is an assist as well. I managed to get this Ice from plus zero to plus five during the anniversary. This Ahmed is an adventurer, Naza is an adventurer, Daphne is an adventurer, Cassandra is an adventurer, and then Diansect is an assist, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check on Eyes versus Ahmed. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the Eyes is an assist, if I'm not mistaken, because I remember getting these guys way too often, so I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure because I can literally see it on my phone right now. Um, what they are, what they do, the Eyes, just to give you guys an idea, Esther, Magic, and p -Res. Minus 15% and allies earth attack damage plus 20%, which is actually not bad, you know. Um, but it would have been nice to give them buffs because if we were to look at the actual balance updates that they've given, if I can open my Discord. Thank you to J Josh C from the uh, Valiris uh, Discord. Big shout outs to him for making these uh, additions. But if you look at the adjustments, if you look at Daphne... Her essay goes from uh, effectively giving 70% strength per agility, or goes from 60% strength per agility buff to 70%. So it's 70% strength per agility buff. So it will be a total of 140 instead of 120, assuming you have a agility buffer in the team, like say Alf, for example. And then of course her giving agility herself through her buffs itself, right? Or allies giving agility, either or. Then her second skill goes from 20, uh, 30%, uh, oh, sorry, 25% single target debuff, so damage increased by 25% for single target attacks to 30%. This actually kind of makes her a solid sacrificial unit, you know. If you're going into so an event, let's say like uh, Record Buster or Familiar Rush, right, and it's the final stage and you're taking a full single target team, that 30% st uh, single target debuff is actually really, really good. So. In all honesty, Daphne's ability for Record Buster is not bad at all. It's actually probably one of the better ones, in all honesty. In that regards, you might want to consider doing a multi or two just to see if you can potentially get a copy of her for just pure debuff purposes and sacrificial unit purposes. Her third skill goes uh, similar to the special arts, goes from 60% to 70% per agility buff. Not bad at all there either. And passives just boosts uh, her stats up a little bit. It's increased by 5%. Naza effectively goes from SA buff of four turns instead of two turns, so that makes it a lot easier to keep her buffs for longer. Her single tar uh, her single target, I mean her S1, goes from 65% to 70% agility and SGR buff, and additional actions have turned to mid instead of low additional actions, which is great. I always am a advocate of increasing modifiers for additional actions, especially now that a lot of units are becoming mid. Not, not mid in that regards, or their additional actions are becoming mid, okay? Uh, her second skill and third skill go from high to super, but her second skill also removes penetration rate buffs as well, along with STR buffs on enemies, which is great. 
Her passives also shows that her uh, stats are increased by 5% and her crit and pen penetration damage buff has gone to 20% instead of 15%. Very, very solid here. Not Nothing crazy though. And for me personally, that's a bit of an issue that I have with Danmachi. I've said it before when we had the buffs for the Midsummer, uh, a Midsummer Night Sabbath is that the buffs aren't great they aren't fantastic they can be a lot better but they don't end up being a lot better as a result uh, for some reason and i feel like i i can see why they're doing it obviously because they don't want to make older units super overpowered where they're beating newer units right because the the model of Don Machi is gacha is primarily make people got buy the new unit and get the new unit i should say so it's not gonna really work if they start buffing up older units to a ridiculous amount but I feel like this is a little bit too basic at times, you know, it's very very basic for no reason and it could be a lot better. Cassandra's special arts adds foes ailment resist minus 40% for 3 turns and her S1 buffs are now 40% instead of 35% and she adds 4 additional actions where she gives 40% HP heals and shortens status debuffs by 2 turns. I love the fact that they gave her additional actions, especially some decent ones, I think that's gonna be great for her. Um, I still think a lot of people were expecting more from this Cassandra, people really wanted this Cassandra to be a lot better, but she isn't unfortunately and that's a shame, uh, it is a shame, it is honestly a shame. So we had that of course, right, we had the, we had this, uh, whole thing of like oh they're buffing the old units i have turned my own camera off i meant to turn this off uh, and go back to the slides so the balance updates are just that i was really hoping like i said if they buff the assist like right it would have been super super nice but for now it's just there i think this banner is a lot better though i think if you are planning on summoning you probably want to summon on this banner just to get at least maybe like the daphne copy or a cassandra copy or something like that but in all honesty you probably want to skip this banner Personally speaking, I think this is a very good skip and a very easy skip. Get the iris from the tail and hightail it out of there, in all honesty. Just hightail it out of there. Okay, so this is what's coming this week in terms of a new story. But we are also getting a new Astraea record banner. Now, of course, on the channel, you've probably seen who it is. You've probably seen the animations. I've got a video up. If you haven't, go check it out. But we are getting, well, 50 Iris for one to celebrate the release of the new novel coming out. Um, it's coming out on the 15th, so we will be getting 50 Iris next, uh, next Tuesday. And we are getting two new units as well. We're getting a Lyra and we're getting a new Kaguya. Now, the Lyra is a Thunder unit and Kaguya is a dark unit and the banner is similar to the Elise and Ardy banner which isn't bad in the slightest in my personal opinion but the only big issue with these time limited banners are the Elise and Ardy one and now this is I don't know why they don't give hero heroic trials for these like there are limited units we should be getting heroic trials for these units in all honesty I'm so annoyed that we, we aren't getting one for these guys it really is it really is truly annoying but it is what it is. We are also getting exclusive equipment for Kaguya and Lyra. They will be available in the event shop. I'm pretty sure it's the same weapons they already had. So if you've been playing since the third anniversary, you should be fine. But I don't think these are any different weapons. Let me actually check because I can probably see and compare the weapons for Kaguya and everything. Because I literally have Kaguya, right? So may as well check it out. So if I go over here and if I bring Kaguya onto the team, where is my Kaguya? There she is. I can compare the weapon literally and uh, see if it's actually a different weapon or not. No, it's the same weapon. It is exactly the same weapon. So there's realistically, I mean, if you have already been, if you've been playing the game and uh, if you have these units already, you probably already have their weapon, right, from the older versions. But you can probably get an easier way of crafting these weapons now rather than getting the moonstones and, you know, exchanging them in the uh, event exchange and stuff like that. So that's good at least, or the special exchange, I should say. So we have that. Now let's look at what they do, shall we? Because I was hoping, I still wish the English version would, all, uh, you know, put the translations here. But I have to go over to our good friend Jassi again and see what Kaguya and Lyra do. So let's scroll down and see what Ly uh, Kaguya does first. So Kaguya is an AoE attacker. She does foes ultra dark physical attack with ultra penetration rate, skill damage plus 60% per self, STR mag, agility debuff, and foes P res minus 60% for three turns. Again, a lot of this incorporation of all the debuffs on yourself as dealing more damage, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I've been saying this for a long time. It kind of limits the unit way more than it should be. It becomes more war game specific than PvE specific in terms of the damage she will deal from her essays. And that's a little bit of a problem to me personally. Her S1 is 74 MP. 
Foes slow P res minus 35% for 5 turns and self agility 70% for 5 turns and adds 1 additional actions. I think this should have been 2 in my opinion at the very least. Mid dark physical attack with ultra penetration rate skill damage per plus 35% per foe SDR match agility buff. So that, that additional action is actually better in my personal opinion. This, this additional buff thing that she has right 35% per for SGR Mag Agility buff, I think that would have been a little bit better because in war games at least that's what happens. And even in record buffs or in familiar, war, uh, in familiar rush and stuff, you see that happening. But she also removes the SGR Magic and Agility buff. So I can see why the additional action is only one because technically you don't get that extra damage because you've removed the SGR Magic Agility buffs. But you know the enemy is probably going to set it up in the next turn anyway. So it's a little here and nor there kind of situation. It is, it is what it is. Her S2 is fast, SGR dexterity 60% and dark attack damage or SIG 8 charge plus 100% for one turn and removes status debuffs. S3 is 65 MP, foes fast, super dark physical attack and ultra on counter rate. Skill damage plus 20% per foe, SGR mag agility buff and self SGR dexterity dark attack damage plus 60% for two turns. The kit itself is actually pretty decent, you know? I really like what they've done with it, but the thing is, I don't know how the AI is going to treat this, especially because of all the one-turn abilities, the two-turn abilities. It's very, 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 very awkward. Now, in my head, I would probably go with S1 first, then I would do S2, and then I would do S3 potentially, right? That's how I would go about it. You would place her with potentially a unit like, say, Fianna who's able to extend those buffs because of that right as a result of that ability um, You know as a result of her ability to be able to extend buffs and extend uh, you know 4d buffs as well But I don't know. I'm still not the uh, biggest fan of this kit to be quite honest again I want to talk to some other players some other top players see what they think and then of course when we do the should you summon on Thursday when the banners drop I can give you guys more of an insight on how I feel about these units, especially this Kaguya specifically, right? Um, in terms of her passives, she's got plus 45% light res, counter and RA are dark physical attack, 35% STR endurance agility and dexterity, 5% HP MP regen, 20% damage on crit and penetration, and 20% P res and M res. Her stats aren't bad, you know, 1159 agility is not too shabby. 12, uh, 200, 2,179 STR is not bad at all. Again, it's pretty decent. Um, obviously, I would prefer a little bit more across the board, but just her kit itself is... I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Let me know what you guys think about Kaguya's kit down below because I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. I'm kind of iffy on it. Initially, I was kind of like, okay, it looks interesting. It's pretty decent, but then I saw the conditions and it's not really appeasing to me personally i'm not the biggest fan of this but again i'm curious to see what you guys have to say down below in the comment section below now we move on to lyra right here you guys can probably not see lyra's picture but we will show it to you guys right here so you guys can see it lyra's picture is right there stats are pretty decent good agility 1266 better than kagya's surprisingly for a magic unit it's impressive 2000 magic about the same as most magic units nowadays i would say most magic units i didn't even realize it until very recently that magic units are primarily between the 2000 to 2100 range they've not gone to the 2150 plus range as far as i know i could be wrong though somebody can you know immediately correct me in the comments i wouldn't be surprised but her essay lyra's essay is ultra thunder magic attack with ultra and god raid and temporary grade magic boost remove status buffs and apply seal and adds three additional actions Foes mid thunder magic attack and shortens foes SDR magic agility buffs and uh, allies SDR mag magic and agility debuffs by four turns. Not bad, okay? I, I, I like the fact that it removes status buffs uh, from foes, which is good. It applies seal, which is also decentish, right? Uh, especially if you are placing her alongside, you know, fellow. Um, Units. Oh, Jossie's added more. There you go. <laughs> I was wondering what was happening there, but I guess he's adding more uh, information as we go along. All right. So I like this. It's not bad at all. I think this is pretty decent. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what else she has. Let's see. S1 is 91 MP, 4 Super Thunder Magic Attack with Ultra and Counter Rate and Remove Self uh, self and Self Remove Status Debuffs. Okay. Wish this was all. I think this would have been a bit better if it was all. Um, and Foes Agility and Thunder is minus 40% for 5 turns and adds 2 additional actions. Foes Thunder, Magic Attack and Shorten Foes, uh, STR, Magic and Agility buffs. Okay, I like this. I, I like this. But, uh, I'm, oh, okay, okay, one thing I'm gonna check really quickly. 
One thing I'm really gonna check really quickly is because we re we we recently got another Thunder Magic unit like what a month ago, month and a half ago, pretty much, right? In the form of uh, Wiene, right? Thunder Magic uh, Cyber Ops event we had, right? And it, she was pretty decent in her in her own right, right? Um, a bit slower than this Lyra by around 60 agility. Uh, a little bit stronger magically, around 20 damage, uh, 20 magic more. Now. This, uh, this, uh, Wiene also has the ability to reduce STR, Magic, Agility, and MRes minus 40% on her uh, second skill, and STR, Magic, Agility, and MRes buffs is minus 3 turns. You could probably run both of them together, but the thing that is, you probably will run both of them together though, that's the thing. I think you would want to run these two together because they're just going to help each other out, especially because... Lyra on her second skill gives allies fast 30% HP heal, which is something that in my opinion, you know, t this sort of team did not require necessarily. And God Raid AoE and SD damage taken minus 30% for one turn. Wait, God Raid minus 30%? Sh sh shouldn't this God Raid be plus 30%? I think it should be plus 30%. Why would your God Raid go down? I know AoE and SD damage taken makes sense. You take less damage as a result of that, which is good. And self magic, agility, thunder attack damage, P res, M res, plus 60% for four turns. Really solid here. This is very, very good. I think you'll probably want to run the Wiene and uh, uh, Lyra together. I'm curious to see what third unit is going to be. Again, when we do the should you summon, I'm going to probably prepare a thunder magic team to showcase like what exactly could you do with like all the thunder units together. Because I can see these two working together really well question is what sort of third or fourth unit would you want to take maybe you want to take some a unit like maybe say galmus or something like that to help stall and protect your team protect your team maybe like say raul for example potentially right um to be able to ensure that you're gonna survive those hits effectively before when and then you can get going in the second turn potentially right maybe maybe something like that her third skill is 51 mp it's a single target slow super thunder magic attack with ultra and god rate and temporary great magic boost and sleep not bad at all so 45 percent water res counters and ra are thunder magic 35 percent magic agility dexterity 20 percent damage on crit and penetration 35 percent damage reduction on guard not bad not bad 20 percent mres and p res yeah this this lyra is probably a better option compared to kaguya i would say immediately i can tell that this uh, lyra is going to be a better option than the kaguya just purely because of the fact that well i can see this Ka lyra being well worked with wiene and stuff so in my opinion i would say that is going to be the case in in, in my personal opinion so there you have that all right so we have that for uh, first and foremost now we move on to the second uh, set of things so down memo tips Okay, so we have the raid event coming up. We have a familiar rush coming up. This seems to be based on the Ice and Wonderland quest. So I expect weaknesses directed towards those units, right? So let's see. First one is Emrez down, Fire Res down. So you want to take Riveria in here, basically. So Phantasma Killer is effective. Fire M attacks are effective. Okay, 30% P Res. Okay, you could probably still run a physical light team heal. A uh, physical light team here or even a physical fire team here in all honesty the p res isn't that high it is a significant amount because it's a 60 percent resistance difference between magic and p uh, physical units but in all honesty i think you could still get away with it in this phase you'll just get a lesser score i would say but again we'll see how it goes when we do some testing on the day of uh, the familiar rush itself so fire m attacks are against all targets are effective riveria is going to be able to de keep damage consistent even when suffering from str and match debuffs is recommended um you will want to primarily focus on all attack tar all target attacks but counter attacks and single target attacks are still an important source of damage that is always true i've always said this so the foes decrease your str and magic so you want to keep that in mind um you want to remove uh, opponents when uh you know you want to be able to see if you can have something that can remove status debuffs right there are uh you know units that can do that we've seen units in the past that can do that um mad hatter hermes can make an effective ally that he can buff both all and single target attacks yeah 100 percent. i think that's a very significant point that he, uh, the game is made or the tips are making there Hermes is actually really good. You know, we did the test for Record Buster a while back comparing the damage between Feliz and Hermes. Obviously, we said that Feliz was much better. Uh, not necessarily much better, but it was a significant difference between the two. But again, we were using it in two completely different scenarios. If you're using, you know, full AoE attackers and then maybe you want to drag in a unit like, say, Finn, or you're using counter attacks, which are counted as single target damage, right? You want to use a unit like Hermes who can 
boost both the AoE damage as well as single target damage. So yeah, um, something to bear in mind. We'll, we'll obviously have a full tips and tricks for the familiar rushes as well. Don't worry about that. Um, we'll look at all the options we have in terms of uh, Phantasma Killer, Fire Magic Attack users and stuff like that. All right, so the second one is P res minus 40%, uh, water res minus 60%. So if you have been playing since the fourth anniversary, you could technically get away with using the fourth anniversary units. And if you have, say, Raul or Eyes, you can probably incorporate them into the team as well. But of course, you want to also look at other options because one of the beautiful things is that there is no light res this time around. So you could literally run physical light and just dominate this stage. In all honesty, you will be fine. The opponent does remove status buffs, so around turn 4, which is always when it happens, turn 4 is when they will probably remove your status buffs. So, they mentioned that Eyes and Raul are good choices here, thanks to their Phantasma Killer ability, and Water P attacks that can hit all targets. So, yeah, I think they will be, uh, you know, removing your buffs at turn 4, so just bear that in mind. Of course, once we get into the phases, we will see exactly when that actually happens. Now, the third enemy is a single target enemy, as always, Jab. Walk, Phantasma Killer is effective and Thunder Physical Attacks are effective. Um, he increases his STR, he decreases RP resistance, and he removes debuffs on self. Again, the debuffs removal will probably happen on turn 4, so bear that in mind. They mention units like Ana Kitty and Thunder Attacks like Laurel, Agent, Daphne, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, is the Daphne that we've just seen a second ago. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the Daphne that is going to be coming out during the rerun banner, right? Um, so you could probably take that Daphne if you have her, especially with her buffs now. She's actually going to be decent. So that's something to bear in mind. The enemy can remove debuffs on himself. So make sure to reapply them when that happens to keep your damage high. So yeah, that's something to bear in mind. So sacrificial units like, say, Helga or Otaral, where they reduce the opponent's uh, physical resistance or magic resistance or whatever it may be. That will obviously get removed on turn 4, so it's something to bear in mind when you're going into this fight. Not, not going to be difficult again. Again, like I said, because of the physical resist down and the fact that there is no light resistance, most players should be able to take a light team and still get some very, very, very solid damage in here. So in all honesty, try and maximize that if possible. Now, this, uh, this is the schedule. We have uh, obviously this banner coming out. Um, the rerun banner, you've got the uh, banner with Eyes, uh, Daphne and Cassandra. I think it's the better banner. And on the other side, you have uh, Dian, Sect, uh, Naza and Ahmed. Not a bad banner there, but again, I would say probably skip these banners if you really, really don't want to summon. Just avoid it. It's not necessary. Like I said, this is the better banner, though. I will still put that statement out there. It's not worth it, though, in my personal opinion. Um, Unless you need, like, CP for one of these characters. You've never pulled a Daphne or a Cassandra. You might want to try your luck with that, maybe. Um, Obviously, it is also, mind you, it's 200 Iris for every non-guaranteed step. And then the guaranteed step is normal 400 Iris. So that's something to bear in mind. This banner, on the other hand, I, I I don't know, man. I actually just don't know what to say about this banner yet, to be honest. I feel like Lyra is going to be fantastic, especially if you have Vine. But then you run the risk of pulling Kaguya, who I don't know where I would place right now. Honestly, Kaguya wouldn't be bad on a team alongside maybe, like, say, the Valera and the Finn from the 5th anniversary, right? But... I, I don't know. I actually just don't know. I think it's something that I'm going to have to talk to other people and see what they think. And then maybe on Thursday, once we have some time to digest these units a little bit more, see what they can do. Maybe see what they actually do when we take them with as a trial unit or something. We can probably see where they'll fare. But right now, I'm not too sure, man. I'm not too sure about this banner. Um, we also have bundles for the Lost Justice banner, which is good. Uh, we have a Revis record buster coming. Okay, okay. Um, I assume this is going to be Water Revis, so... You will probably see Thunder Weaknesses and stuff. When I say Water Reavers, it'll probably be Thunder Weak is what I mean, more so than anything else. We have a new 7 zone coming up, and then next week we have War Game 7 zone and Familiar Rush. So, Familiar Rush is still a ways away, we don't have to worry too much about that, we still have a week. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the next stream is on the 22nd. But yeah, that's all we're getting in this, uh, in the next two weeks. We're getting a new, two, two new banners, we're getting Familiar Rush next week, we're getting Record Buster this week, War Games next week. So, a lot of stuff to look uh, forward to and a lot of stuff to create content on, so I'm very excited about it. Of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course, comment down below what are you guys most excited about. Are you planning on summoning on the Kaguya Lyra banner or even the old banner? Let me know. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say down below. Until then, however, hopefully you guys have a lovely rest of your day, wherever you may be. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye, everybody.